Hello, everyone. This is ICO Talk. My name is Yelena. And today I have Bobby Batia, founder and CEO of Track Invest. Hello, Bobby. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Elena. Great to see you. Okay. So please, first of all, tell us a few words about Track Invest. What is it all about and what's the main idea behind the project? Whom is it made for? And actually, what are the main problems that it solves? All right. A lot of questions there, so I'm going to try <laughs> once at a time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we'll try it anyway. So listen, Track Invest, uh, we're based out of Singapore. We're an Asian-based product. Uh, I spent about 25 years in the whole private equity industry. And one of the key ideas and things that I noticed is the average retail investor always ended up losing in the markets, right? So this is a concept called information asymmetry. What that means is that, you know, the guys who have more information, for, for example, the institutional investors, et cetera, you know, they would have more information and they, as a result, they would make better investment decisions. And the guy who was at the retail level did not have as many good investment tools or information to really make good, profitable decisions. Yeah. So the idea was to empower the retail investor. So the way we did that was a few things. One, when we set up Track Invest, it's a virtual trading platform. It's built on the learn, share, earn model. So imagine you come onto the platform, you get $100,000 of fake virtual money, and you can play play a simulated game, and everything else on the platform is real. The stock prices, the prices of different assets, the news, uh, people's track records. So, you know, you can type in, let's say, Microsoft or Apple, and you can see who's doing well. And let's say it says Elena is doing well. So I said, I want to follow Elena. So now every time Elena buys or sells a stock, I get a real-time update, right? So okay. we started off as a game, uh, and, and, and uh, banks and brokerages used us as a talent, sorry, as a uh, acquisition tool for customer perspective. Mm -hmm. Then what we did was we partnered up with universities and we said, you know, people on a platform really wanted a desire to learn investing as a, as a tool. So we partnered up with universities across the region and started offering certifications and training. Mm -hmm. Then we started talking to banks and corporates and the banks and corporates said, hey, we love the certification program that you're offering. So if people go through your certification, they will end up getting a job with us, or they'll be in the final rounds of interview, mm -hmm. right? So that's how we actually started. The idea oh, sorry, was... Sorry, sorry for interrupting you. And when was it? So uh, when did you launch the project, actually? So we, we've been around since 2014. Just, and over just, the last four years, basically have built up 150,000 user base in the region. Mm -hmm. We've built up partnerships with governments. For example, the government of Andhra Pradesh, we're working with the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Oman. Uh, we're working with different state governments in India. We're working with the leading in, uh, 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 bank in Thailand called Siam Commercial Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're doing the same thing in Vietnam in the region. And we're continuing to grow our presence here. So mm -hmm. since 2014, we'd had built up a significant user base. Now, the main question was, why did we decide to move on to the blockchain? Right? Yes, yeah, that's what, what I wanted to ask. Was okay. the real reason for it, right? So imagine what I told you. Look at the name, Track Invest. So it stands for two things. Track, meaning you can track somebody. So you can track a good performer and see what he or she buys, and then you can copy them and improve your trading. That's one. The basis on which you follow somebody is based on their track record. So you can look at the track record, you can track, and then you can invest. So the idea, that's where the name came from, Track Invest. Now, the idea was, imagine you're in Russia, I'm in Singapore. You're a great trader, and I want to follow you, right? Before, okay. when I used to follow you, you never got any benefit out of it because you were sharing your data. We truly believe that my data is my data. So if you are a good trader, and you're sharing your data, and I have to pay you $1, $2, or $5, or $10, or whatever that amount is okay. per month to follow you, how do I get that micropayment from Singapore to, let's say Moscow or from Philippines to Vietnam. So the first thing we did was we tokenized reputational systems. When we introduced a track token, we could do that ability. So we could follow people across borders in a frictionless manner. Mm -hmm. The second concept was because we offer, offer certificates, right? Or diplomas. Uh, so you're qualified as an investor. Now those certificates can be held on the public blockchain. And anybody can validate, oh, yes, this is your certificate by you providing the public hash sheet. Mm -hmm. Number three, as, as your trading data builds up, there are other people who can come in 
like robo-advisors or independent wealth managers or researchers or hedge funds who can then utilize your data to build more financial products and you know other research products that they want. Mm-hmm. As they pay, use your data, 80% of the earnings of that go back to you. So everything is on the blockchain. Everything is transparent. Yeah. And ultimately what we're doing is we are rewarding our user base with the intent that this will also help fuel the growth and us to grow bigger. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what about the competition in this sphere? Uh, whom you consider to be your main competitors, actually? Well, um, there are different people. You know, the, the, the whole concept of stock market simulation and stock market games has been really around for a long time. Social trading, when you could follow each other, is a concept that actually started coming up around 2011, 2012, on the back of a lot of research that was being done and how social trading could actually improve the whole uh, retail customer experience and acquire customers. One of the first companies to do this, similar to us, was a company called eToro. But really what happened was that eToro and other companies such as this, they ended up evolving to become a brokerage, right? So you had eToro, you had Robinhood in the US, a number of these different companies. Uh But instead of becoming a brokerage, What we said was, instead of becoming a brokerage, what we want to focus on is the education piece, right? And empowering piece. So we were more about the education, upskilling, and jobs. So as far as I've seen around the world, uh, there is no direct competitor in the entire ecosystem that we've created, right? So Mm -hmm. that means it's virtual trading. You can earn. You can share. You can earn without spending any money on the platform as long as you have good ideas. Across the world, people can follow you, uh, access your data, and you can earn from it. Mm -hmm. Um, And and you really focus on upskilling as opposed to the brokerage piece. So, you know, I think uh, creating the ecosystem were quite unique. But if you were to look at the individual parts of the business, obviously, there are other competitors in the market, but not as an entire ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got it. Okay, so before we start talking about your ICO that is already finished for Track Invest, uh, as I know it, uh, please tell us a few words about the, your team who is working with you. Sure, sure. Uh, our team has been based out of Singapore and in Bangalore in India. Mm-hmm. Um, our team is pretty diverse from you know people from Indonesia to Philippines to India to Vietnam. Uh, so we work with a pretty diverse team. Um, Majority of our team uh, is on the technical side. So up till now, you know, we've really focused on building the product. Um, and we built the product in Scala, Akka, and these were languages that, you know, evolved from the whole Java uh, kind of language thing. So we have uh, basically a microservice architecture. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use a lot of in-memory databases. So I would say 15% of the individuals in our current team, and we're continuing to grow, are on the technical side. And then we have individuals on the business development uh, and the marketing side. Uh, Mm -hmm. But primarily right now focused on Asia and now expanding also into the Middle East. So we have a big recruiting drive. So that actually takes up a lot of my time, recruiting more people. Mm, Okay. Okay. So the ICO is finished for Track Invest. Please tell us about the results. Uh, What are your results and are you satisfied actually? Absolutely. Listen, um, you know, we launched our ICO in December. We had spent six months before that studying and evaluating and actually putting the team together and the project plan together. Um, As you know, since December, you know, uh, down to basically February and March, the cryptocurrencies market were very, very volatile and and saw quite a bit of negative performance. Um, I think there's a few things that are key to note here. First of all, we're very satisfied uh, with our ICO. While we were doing the ICO, we observed two things. One is crowd sale became more difficult and we moved much more to the private sale model. Uh, So people were looking and putting a lot more scrutiny on the product itself. Mm -hmm. Number two, we actually saw a a large amount of liquidity, organic liquidity, starting to dry up in the market. Now, I think that's going to hurt uh, a lot of the ICOs on a post-market perspective. But I think the ICO investors are also maturing and realizing that it really comes down to the quality of the project, right? And the ability for the management team to execute that project. And that's where we feel very, very confident because we're in operating products since 2014. You know, some of the banks and the governments that we've been working with, it's taken us two to three years to actually execute the, pro, uh, um, execute the partnerships. So I think, um, you know, we're well positioned and we're well differentiated from a perspective that now 
you know, we actually have the product on the blockchain by, you know, even though we just completed our ICO less than a month ago, by June, the first week of June, you know, our entire track and platform, everybody's going to have a wallet and the entire thing is going to only accept, our entire platform will accept um, only track tokens as um, mode of payment for, for basically any product or service. So within a very short period of time, we migrated our, our platform onto blockchain and, and, and the customers can now start using it and get the benefit of many of the use cases that we'd actually outlined. So overall, we're very, very excited. Uh, the markets agreeably are difficult, uh, but as a result, what we're doing is making sure that the team is strategically focused on delivering all of our milestones, you know, as we had, uh, stated in our white paper. Oh, actually, yes, that's what I wanted to ask you next about the roadmap. Uh, and well, what milestones have you already succeeded to achieve to the moment? Right, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is by the third week of May, we're launching our ability to trade cryptocurrencies on our platform. So remember, Track Invest was focused on uh, virtual trading of equities. And now we've added on the cryptocurrencies. We're in our final testing stage. And as discussed, we'll be able to launch that in the third week uh, of May. The first week of June, all the wallets and, and, and the wallets and the crypto wallets that basically will allow any of our users to utilize track tokens for any product and service that's offered on Track Invest will be launched by June 1, the first week of June. Mm -hmm. um, the, sec the, the other thing that, that we had mentioned in our white paper are artificial intelligence tool. What I mean by that, we are actually creating a tool using graph theory uh, and with our whole artificial intelligence and machine learning team where you'll be able to enter any cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and basically our system, our artificial intelligence tool, is going to look through all the Twitter feeds, all of the forums, all of the news, interpret this in terms of a sentiment, whether it's positive, negative. We'll be looking at, you know, where it's ERC-20 tokens throughout the blockchain and seeing the movements within wallets. Um, we'll be looking at price, volume charts, and a number of different technical indicators to give you a confidence level to say, hey, do we view this XYZ currency or altcoin to be going up or to be going down? right, in, in a certain time period. And what is our confidence level around this? It's a highly complex model. It's a predictive price model. And we should be launching that in the first week of August. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are our key projects that are going on, but some other initiatives. But before I get to that, Elena, I wanted to mention to you, the way we acquire customers is through a Track Invest show. The Track Invest show mm -hmm. is a virtual reality trading show that came on YouTube and now it's coming on India's largest uh, financial news channel, ET Now. So the premise is everybody's playing at home and seeing it's like a competition who's the best at trading and who has the best portfolio. Ah. The top six people are on TV. And if you happen to be playing anywhere in the world and you beat the guys on TV, they get kicked <laughs> off and you get thrown and you get to be on TV. But the interesting thing is that the top 100 people in season one got jobs. This season, we have the top 5,000 people getting jobs. Now, we have the same product that's launching in Vietnam with uh, a tele the leading um, uh, financial television station called FBNC. In Thailand, we're partnered with the largest bank called Siam Commercial Bank, mm -hmm. SCB, and we're doing the same thing in, in, in those markets. So we're very excited that we're actually rolling out our product, getting it to market. The idea was once we were on the blockchain, you know, that we want to use our TV show to really bring the people in. Because guess what? What that does? That builds organic demand. Because now when people want to use our platform for product or services, they need to go buy track tokens in the market and, and then use the track tokens. And whenever we do shows like this, you know, we end up engaging a million plus people in each of the markets. So, ah, okay, that's what I wanted to ask, yes, about the, the, uh, your revenue model, actually, and the way, uh, the, the way the token demand will be provided, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. So, so remember, we talked about somebody being able to track somebody. So imagine if I'm tracking you and based on your level, so let's say I'm giving you $10 worth of track tokens. Okay. Track Invest keeps 20% of that in order to be able to facilitate that. Mm -hmm. Number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we also have our own certifications and education program on our platform. 
Mm-hmm. Those education platforms are, are, are priced somewhere between $150 to $300 per certificate, right? Mm-hmm. So again, they will have to pay that to us in, 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 in the form of track tokens. On our TV show, sponsorship and advertisers will have to pay us in track tokens. If they cannot pay us in track tokens, we are just instituting a partner fund where they will give us the cash and we will go out into the open market and mm-hmm. purchase the track tokens on their behalf so they can actually avail of that service. Mm-hmm. So as we mentioned, tracking fees, certifications, sponsorship, advertisements, um, uh, and then of course the AI tool. If you want to use the AI tool, every time you query the AI tool, like a Bloomberg, mm-hmm. you'll have to pay for that query in track tokens again. That's going to be much more of a distributed application that we're going to work with exchanges and other uh, news websites mm-hmm. like such as yours for people or your customers who want to use that service, you know, we'll provide that in a distributed fashion, not only on our website. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see. And now the most interesting thing. So uh, now the ICO is finished. Uh, so what is the, the, well, you know, your current plans? So how do you see the future of the project uh, after the ICO? Sure, sure. That's a great question. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. So one of the key things is, as any product that comes out, you have to look at the product itself, and you have to look at the blockchain that you're using. For the purposes of our ICO, we utilize the ERC-20 token you know, on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, as we looked at the platform, we spent the last three to four months building relationships at the protocol level. So we wanted to see, as we build a bigger platform, so imagine if we're building the certification product, the certification product is not only going to carry our certifications, Given that we've built it, you know, other universities in the region who want to put their diplomas and their, you know, uh, mark sheets or whatever they have on the public blockchain for them can actually pay us for us to implement that product for them on our blockchain or a private version of that blockchain. So that's, again, in another rev- uh, revenue model. But as we were looking at the mass scale and, you know, guess what? Asia is a big, big market, right? We got a billion one people yeah. in India. We got 400 million people in Indonesia. We got China, you know, another billion, two people. You know, we're talking about a very large population and we would have needed something big, robust, who can deal with a number of things. You can deal with micropayments and just has an ability in an efficient manner to scale. Uh, In that respect, I'm really happy to announce that we have partnered up with Hashgraph and Hedera and you'll be hearing more about our partnership, um, you know, in in, in the coming days and, and weeks. Uh, but, you know, Hashgraph and Dara was probably the best protocol that we saw. And, you know, where we said, you know, it, this is a protocol that can process, you know, 500,000 transactions per second. We love the transparency. We love the security features of it. And we've spent considerable amount of time with their lead developer advocates and, and their management and really got comfortable and, you know, really took a call that we were going to launch our product you know, basically on Hashgraph and Adera. And, 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 you know, we're very, very happy with that choice. Uh, the okay. second thing that we're building out, and hopefully we can launch this by June 15th, and I'm, our team is working hard, which was not in the original white paper, but in nonetheless, it's a financial product. The idea being is that we will provide our investors and the global community to um, uh, buy into a crypto ETF. What I mean by ETF, So imagine if I gave you the ability to, an ETF stands for an exchange-traded fund. So imagine it's like a basket of cryptos, okay? So we have an index that has Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether, Zcash, Ripple, let's say hypothetically, right? It's a basket. And it will mimic, the index will mimic the combined performance of this basket. Mm -hmm. So what we want to offer to increase the utility of the track token is you could invest say, 100 track tokens or 1,000 track tokens in this basket. And based on how the basket would perform, whether it would go 5% up or 10% up based on the market price of those, of those currencies, you know, let's say it went up 20% and then you came in to sell. For the 100 uh, track token investment, you would get 120 track token investment. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to earn in track tokens and track basically some other basket of cryptocurrency. So we'll be offering these ETFs, these index products mm-hmm. uh, in, in a very short time to come. Mm-hmm. So those are the two uh, key 
that were not mentioned, uh, but they've been our real key strategic initiatives that we want to, you know, uh, bring value to our investors and and bring value uh, to what I call the track token. Mm-hmm. Okay, that sounds absolutely amazing. Great. <laughs> okay, and just to summarize the whole talk, after the ICO is finished, uh, after you know now everything, uh, what are your ex- expectations of the ICO market in future in general? About its, What do you think about its perspectives in the world? So I think um, a couple of things. G- good question, and I think I touched upon this earlier. I think that free money grab and just thinking anybody can just come and do the ICO and, you know, I'll lose a ton of money. I think that story is a bit over. I think the, the, uh, the investor is also a lot more sophisticated today and understands uh, the project. And you really have to have an underlying case for building a decentralized product in order for your ICO to be successful. So I think the investor is becoming much, much more discerning, number one. Number two, I think just kind of, thinking about doing it, you know, and doing it through bounty programs and Facebook marketing and Twitter marketing. Uh, sorry, guys, I don't think that actually works. I Again, you really have to focus on the core product and you have to have a real value proposition there. Number three, I think a lot of existing businesses are now starting to look at the ICO route. Uh, so no longer that's just a pure white paper and, and a concept work. I think people are going to start discerning and and, and, and companies that can build a product to market or have an existing product that they're transforming are definitely going to be better poised to come in and take advantage of ICO funding as an alternative to venture capital. Um, and I think there's also um, a distinct regulatory uh, environment um, that's actually developing. You know, one is the U.S., and the U.S. in itself has a very different perspective, right? So the U.S., yeah. I think, is probably going to go down the route that is not going to uh, recognize utility tokens, and it's going to be more focused on equity tokens. And people who have issued utility tokens in the U.S. jurisdiction or have taken um, money from those investors in the U.S. jurisdiction, you know, might be actually forced. And you know, let's see how the regulation comes. But at least uh, what I can see of the market, uh, U.S. is definitely going to go down the security token path. Uh, mm-hmm. I think in Asia, the utility token is is a little bit more ex- accepted, um, but I think the jury's still out. We'll have to see how the market develops and how the regulators actually uh, build up. But you know, I have to say one thing, Singapore continues to be a great jurisdiction. Uh, it's a very transparent, open, well-governed mm-hmm. jurisdiction. And I think, uh, I think you know, being based here uh, has really helped us. And you know, we, we constantly get a tremendous amount of support, um, you know, uh, and, and also a tremendous amount of guidance uh, from the various service providers and also the regulators. So I think, you know, Singapore has been fantastic for us and it's been a great connectivity point. And actually what I'm also observing is a number of the U.S. projects uh, who are actually, you know, our, our friends or people I've known in the past, and even though they're based in the U.S., um, are really looking at the Asia market. And, and I would say the same thing in the U.S. because, you know, either you are a U.S. guy and you go down the U.S. route, but anywhere else global, you know, I would say 60 to 70 percent of the overall ICO demand came from within this region. And, um, you know, many of the projects are actually opting to headquarter their operations out of Singapore, which is great for us because this gives us a huge opportunity to interact with other guys in our industry, both at the protocol level, at the ICO level, at the industry level, and really gives us the ability to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bobby, then thank you so much. Thank you for this interview and for being with us today. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Elena, and really appreciate your time. Okay, so and I remind you that today I had Bobby Batia, founder and CEO of Track Invest. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch more interviews on icotalk.tv. Bye-bye.